In the previous episodes, we've been busy building up this basic program counter circuit here, which can now step through individual instructions in a program and do relative or absolute jumps. We aren't entirely finished with it though. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see how this CPU gradually takes shape. So one thing we're currently missing uh, for this uh, PC uh, register here is a reset. But what we can do is we can actually use this uh, G input, the enable input to the multiplexer as a reset. Uh, if you recall, when we uh, pull that high, uh, it basically disables the multiplexers, making them emit a zero, which we can store in the PC uh, register. Now, one thing we need to do uh, if we do it like that is we always have to enable the PC register during reset. Um, but we still want the ability to disable updating the PC register during normal operation. So what we can do is we can basically add together the reset signal and the clock enable signal, uh, both of which are active low. Uh, if one of them is low, the end gate will output a low, which enables the register. And if both of them are high, the register will be disabled. So basically all it takes is either for the reset to be low or the clock enable line to be low, uh, which is the active state for them, uh, for the register to be enabled. We also want to pull this, uh, this enable line here high whenever the reset is active. So basically when the reset is low uh, in its active state, we want this chi line to go high. And when the reset is high in its disabled state, we want this to go low to basically enable the multiplexers. Since there are AND gates and inverters involved here, uh, let's use a NAND gate for this because we can rearrange that into either of these gates. So we've seen this before, the 74HC00, uh, which is the simple NAND gate. So we still have this LED down here uh, in the left, but we're actually not using it anymore. And I don't think we'll actually use it uh, in the final state of this board. This was just to debug these two other circuits. So I think this is a good spot to put the NAND gates uh, and, and basically wire up to the rest of the circuit. Let me connect power and ground. Okay, so let's say here in the bottom left, which are the uh, two inputs to the first NAND gate, the leftmost one is going to be our reset, which we're going to tie high for now. So it's disabled. And the second one is gonna be our clock enable, uh, which we're going to tie low, which is what we've had before. And this is going to enable the uh, program counter here. So what this does is it basically ends together the reset line and the clock enable line and produces an output on the next pin over here. Uh, but since this is a NAND gate, we have to invert the output to actually get a uh, AND gate. And since this is a NAND gate, um, an easy way to obtain an inverter is just to connect the signal to both inputs of one of the NAND gates, uh, which will simply invert it. So let me do that here. Now this will produce the end of the reset and the clock enable signal here at the output pin. And what we can do now is we can basically take this output and bring it all the way over here to the enable signal for the uh, register. Now what we also want to do is we want to take the reset input here and basically just invert it uh, and drive the uh, enable signal off the multiplexers with it such that when the reset is low, the uh, enable signal goes high, which disables the multiplexer and makes them output a constant zero. So let's bring this reset signal over to the other side of uh, this chip to another NAND gate and let's basically connect it to, two, to both of its inputs uh, to make an inverter.
And this is now going to produce the inverted reset signal here at the output of that NAND gate. And we can bring that over to the enable line of our multiplexers. And there's a fourth AND gate here uh, in this chip, which we're not using. So I'm just gonna tie the inputs to ground so they have a known potential. So let's give this a test and check if this uh, new setup here gives us proper reset capabilities for the uh, program counter. So we have some pattern here in the program counter. Now if we bring the reset low, this should now make all the multiplexers here output a zero so that on the uh, next clock edge, we should actually be clocking in a zero into the register. There you go. And as soon as we release the reset, we should be able to count again. There we go. Now we should still be able to disable the counting uh, by pulling the uh, clock enable high. And hitting the step button now should not update the program counter. Perfect. But still, the reset should work. If we pull the reset low, so you can see, the register gets enabled uh, because the reset is activated causing it to clock in the zero value. And when we disable the reset again, you can see that the clock enable of the register goes low again. That should now allow us to connect the reset input of the, uh, the entire program counter board over to the clock generator here, such that we can actually use the properly synchronized reset output we have here. So let me enable the uh, program counter. And let's step through a few of the steps. And then hitting the reset button here will put the clock generator into reset synchronization mode, which activates the reset wire. And if we hit step, the program counter is actually going to reset. And it's gonna stay in reset for a couple of cycles and now start counting. And we can even disable the clock generator, which makes it just stay where it is. And when we hit reset, the reset is going to activate. The clock enable of the register is going high. And when we hit step, it's clocking in that zero value from the multiplexers until the reset drops. And since the clock is disabled, nothing happens and we stay at zero. But if we enable the clock, we can just step through the program as per usual. We can also step backwards in the program by selecting the relative jump, which if you remember is programmed to a negative one step size. So you can see that's counting backwards. We can also select the absolute jump, which is input two which is going to put this uh, fixed pattern basically into the program counter. And this pattern is gonna come from somewhere in the CPU, uh, a register or something along those lines. And putting it back to stepping mode basically resumes regular operation until we hit the reset and things go back to zero. With this, we can basically also just run this as you can see, the program counter just keeps counting up uh, as it used to, and we can reset it. We can also disable the clock. You see it's still toggling, but the PC is not updating. Reset it, which properly resets it. And enable the counting again.
Now I'm going to look into um, this wiring here a bit off camera and try to figure out why this isn't counting properly. And we might want to do something about this uh, huge mess of wires here as well. So it's easier to work with this board once it's in, uh, in the context of the larger CPU. All right, so that's quite a few nasty wires gone and the program counter looks a little bit cleaner now. There's still a lot going on across the breadboard, but we'll fix that by converting the circuit into a dedicated PCB once we're happy with how everything is working. The reset functionality we've just added was the last thing on our program counter wishlist. I think the circuit we have right now is going to serve us well throughout the first steps we take with the uh, CPU design. In the next episode, I would like to start work on fetching instructions from a memory, and maybe also try to come up with a few basic instruction encodings that already allow us to write simple programs just with the circuit that we already have. Thanks a lot for watching, like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this, and see you next time.